Hey guys and welcome back to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we're going to show you how to apply an interesting looking halftone line effect to your designs using a combination of Illustrator and Photoshop. Let's head onto the computer now and we'll show you how to do this. Okay, so before we get started, do note that you can download this same template file to work from via the link in the description below. So you'll get this exact same Illustrator file, you can see the example we're going to create here as well as the other assets. We have three artboards set up. We also have a Photoshop file for this example as well, so all of this comes bundled in the free download, so be sure to check that out. So back into Adobe Illustrator, you can see the effect we're going to create here. We're going to do two options here, one with text. You can see this is quite rough looking and another one with these gradiating circles here. So it's quite an interesting look we can give this and it's something that would take quite a lot of time to do just in Illustrator alone. We can create this effect fairly easily with the help of Photoshop. So if you download the file, you'll have these designs already in there to use. These are the two examples we're going to show you. We have some simple circles here. They're just concentric circles with different shades of gray applied to each level. We also have have some outlined text here. All we've done is type out some text, outline this. We've dragged off a copy and changed the colour to a lighter shade of grey and we also have applied a white stroke to the text sitting on top. So there's really nothing complicated about these. Now do note that we have to create this in grayscale, so that's why we've not got any kind of colour applied to these, but when we apply the effect and bring it back into Illustrator, that's when we can start applying some colour. So the first thing I want to do is take this over to Photoshop. So what I can do is I could just copy and paste this, but I'm actually going to use our CC libraries. Now if you're not using Adobe Creative Cloud, you can just copy this over just with copying and pasting, or you can export these and bring them into Photoshop. So that's all we're doing is just bringing each of these elements into Photoshop. But as I say, I'm going to use libraries. So I have that set up over on the right hand side. All I need to do is drag each selection into the library. So that's what I'm going to do here. And now we can jump over to Photoshop and we have a simple RGB file set up here. Again, there's nothing special about this. This is set up at the same size as our Illustrator artboards just for ease. And you'll notice now in our libraries within Photoshop, we have our two elements here, our two selections. So I'm just going to click and drag each of these in. Just press enter to place it into our page here. Do the same with the circles. Now this effect is really simple to apply. What we need to do is go up to image, mode, and the first thing we need to do is change this to grayscale. And you're going to want to flatten this as well. We can click don't flatten, but when we do the next step within this process, it will force us to flatten the image. So that's one thing to bear in mind. So I'm just going to click flatten. Then I want to go back up to image, mode again, and we're going to change this to bitmap. So when I click on this, you'll see we get this dialog box popping up and by default, it may be set to something different. It may be set to 50% threshold in our method, but we want to select halftone screen. Just leave your output as whatever it's set to. This is dependent on the document resolution you set up. This is a web document, so it's going to be 72 pixels per inch. Next, I'm going to click OK. And we already have our settings applied that's gonna work in a good way for this. So we have six lines per inch and we have the angle set to 45 degrees. Now, the other thing to note is that by default, your shape may well be set to round and that's going to give you a more traditional dotted half tone effect but in this scenario we want to select line. Now again you can play around with the frequency and angle this essentially will change the weight of the lines and obviously the angle in which they're traveling. We found in this example six is a good size and we want this to be a 45 degree angle it just visually looks quite nice. So I'm just going to click OK and now you can see we're getting this interesting looking halftone line effect. Now it is quite rough but that's the look we're going for so don't be expecting a kind of perfectly smooth line. And now what we can do is, again, I could export this as an image and then bring it back into Illustrator, but again, I'm going to use my CC libraries. So all I need to do is go down to my layers panel. You can see this is just a single background layer. I'm just going to click and drag this up into my libraries panel here. Now, if I go back over to Illustrator, I'm going to move across to our third artboard here, and you can see in our libraries, 
is we have this background option now. If I click and drag this in, this is just essentially a flat image. So we've got our same two elements, but with this effect applied now. So what I want to do now is vectorize this and we're going to just use the good old image trace tool for this. So I have this set up on the right hand side. If you don't have it, go up to window and then image trace. So I'll click this open just now. Now I'm going to click the preview button to begin with and it may not look great to begin with. You can see we're losing a bit of the effect. Certainly with the circle, you're not getting those clear defined steps between each section. So I'm actually going to choose a different preset. Up where it says default, I'm gonna opt for the black and white logo option. Now this hasn't changed much either, but we'll play around with these sliders and see if we can get it to look better. I'm going to also check the ignore white option. So this just means when we expand this to be vectorized, all the white will be ignored. So we're just left with the black areas. Okay, so one of the things that will make a difference is the noise level. So you can see if I bring this right up to 100 pixels, we're gonna lose a lot of the shadow detail with the text. If I bring it back down the other way, we're gonna bring that back in. I can also adjust things like the threshold. Now certain things won't make as big a difference as others, paths will make a big difference as you can see by bringing that up we have a lot more definition corners is another one that we can play around with this is just going to make more flat edges and sharp sharp sections in it so i always like to go somewhere in the middle with this so we've got a mixture okay so i think this is looking okay this will work for this example so i'm just going to click off here if i click my properties panel back on here you can see in our quick actions we have an option to expand this otherwise i can go up to object image trace and expand and now we are simply left with the vectorized version of our effect here so i'm just going to ungroup this right click ungroup this should all be one object but just to make sure i'll click and drag and press command g and same with our text over here i can click and drag over this and press command g we can treat this now how we would treat any other vector object in illustrator we can go and apply colors to it this is really useful so there you have a really simple way of creating some interesting looking graphics by combining Illustrator and Photoshop. If you have any questions, do let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe for more content. If you'd like to know more about our full graphic design course, visit graphicdesignerpro.com. See you next time.